Now it's time to start dimensioning. And this is one of my uh, favorite things about Vectorworks is its ease of dimensioning. And, and they're just sweet, beautiful dimensions. I know, I get carried away, but it's true. If you've ever worked with AutoCAD or if you've worked with <clears throat> other software, I think once you get used to Vectorworks, you will really, really appreciate the um, the ease of dimensioning uh, in this program. So, okay, let's get started. I think the first thing I'll do is I'm going to move this cabinet over just a little bit. I'm just going to nudge it, hold down the shift key, hit the right arrow, nudge it over. This will give me a little bit more room for my dimensions. And I think I'll move this one over just a tad as well. All right, well, it's time to get started uh, dimensioning the cabinet. Now, before we get started, I want to go over one little thing with you. Actually, a couple things, probably. Um, a couple of things that will maybe save you some angst in the future. Um, first of all, let's just look at this drawing. Now, I'm using a font. This is one I did back in 2008. All right, so I'm now doing a new one with you, um, doing exactly what you're going to do. Um, my title block looks different. I, I've got a different uh, font in here, and I've got an extra line in here. So don't let don't let those little things bother you. I, yours doesn't have to look like this. I want you to notice the text uh, behind our dimensions or on our dimension lines. If, if you remember, we set up our dimension class to have a fill, a white fill, which is why it obscures the dimension line um, where the text is, and that's what we want. We don't want to see the line going through our text. It makes it too hard to read. But if you notice here, uh, I was able to not have a white fill, right? If I had a white fill here, this would be white around this text, and this would be white in here, and this would be white, and so on and so forth. What I did was I went ahead and dimensioned the, the you know, this, uh, these doors, for example, and then I changed their fill to the same color as the door. The dimension tool is really great in Vectorworks. I think uh, I think you guys will will really, if you've ever worked with AutoCAD or other programs, they don't hold a candle to um, Vectorworks and the way it dimensions. It's just a beautiful, um, easy to understand system. And so I'm going to show you right now. What you want to do is is open up your palette. Go to tool sets and make sure your tool sets are have a check mark next to it. Make sure it's open. And here's our tool sets right here. And we have all of these different selections in here. This is um, this is site planning, space planning, building shell. We'll be using that one later on. Here's some of your 3D modeling tools, which you'll use in the 3D class uh, next term. Um, and then. I won't go through all of these, but this one right here is dimensioning and notes, or dimensions and notes. So let's click on that, and then all of these dimensioning tools open up. Now, we can, you know, I could sit here and go through all of these right now and put you all to sleep. I won't do that. Um, what I want to do is, is focus on the first two here. We will be doing angular dimensioning and arc line dimensioning and radial dimensioning. So for circles, doing the radius, doing the diameter, um, you will need to call those out from time to time. Um, the other thing that you'll find quite helpful is the tape measure and the protractor tool. And the tape measure, basically, if we click on it, and then we come over here and click on this object and click here, it gives us the length. You can see right there it says the length of the line is 29 and one half. So that's one that'll be handy for you. Um, and we'll go into uh, the protractor later on, but I just wanted to show you. So we're gonna we're gonna focus on these two right here. Let me draw a triangle.
And notice I'm drawing this on the cabinet dimension class, which is something I typically wouldn't do, but just to do an example, it's, it's okay to do that. It's not going to hurt anything. All right. Now, I'm going to select the constrained dimension uh, mode right there. And now when I come over here, I have some more options that I can choose. Do I just want to draw one dimension line? Do I want to do a chain where I have multiple, uh, you know, where I have multiple dimensions on one line? Um, there are some other selections over here that we won't go into at this point. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to click here. Do that again. I accidentally hit the mouse twice. Click, click, and then pull down. In other words, pull it down until the dimension line is the, you know, approximate distance that you want it away from the uh, object that you're dimensioning. And click. So that was click, click, pull down, and click, and you're done. The second mode is for a chain dimension. So when you have a bunch of dimensions that you want to do on one dimension line. Now you can still do just one dimension. There's just one little caveat and that is, watch, click. Notice I have a new cursor now. Little bullseye. Click. Pull away. Click. So far exactly the same except I have to click again to close it out because it thinks that I want to do another dimension because I chose a chain, it's a mode that allows me to do more than one. So if I want to do just one, I have to click, click, pull out, and then click, click. Now let me do this hypotenuse here with the constrained dimension tool. I'm going to click and click and notice that it has Give, not given me the length of that hypotenuse, it's given me the length of the base. So what a constrained dimension is, is any dimension that's either horizontal or vertical. So just think of it that way. Anything that you want to dimension horizontally or vertically, that's the one you're going to use. If, on the other hand, you wanted to actually find out what the length of that hypotenuse is, you're going you're gonna to go to unconstrained and you're going to go to, again, you have the choice of um, doing a single one or a chain. All right, so we'll just do a single one. I'm going to click and click, pull out and click again. Now notice that, let's zoom in on this a little bit, Notice that when I click off of here that the text is horizontal and that's because when we set up that cabinet standard dimension standard that we set it up so that all of the text was going to be horizontal. So and I like that. I, I, I think it makes it easier to read. Um, also notice that the text has a fill behind it and that's also because we said that we wanted a fill behind all of our text on that class. So again, I think you're starting to see how um, all of these settings that we set ahead of time um, make drawing a lot easier so you don't have to go back. Imagine going through and dimensioning a whole uh, you know, structure and then having to go back and change things one at a time. It would be a real pain in the neck. All right. Let's get started and let's actually do some dimensioning. Let's go ahead and dimension the countertop. So once again, I'm gonna I'm gonna select the constraint tool. I'm gonna click. Now one thing you can do when you're not zoomed way in, which I probably should be here, uh, to make sure that I'm gonna be, you know, snapping to that point, you can hit the zoom key. Put your cursor where you want to go hit the Z key and it will zoom in so you can see where exactly you are snapping to. 
Now, it depends on where you have your cursor. So you need to make sure that your cursor is close to where you want to be. So we'll go zoom, click, come over here. I'll hit Z again, click, and pull it up. Double click because I'm in the chain mode. All right, now I'm going to click over here, click here, and I get a hint. I love it. They're both at the same height. Now let's go down to the bottom of the cabinet and let's actually do a chain dimension. Let me get this out of the way. In fact, I can close that. All right. Now, constrained. Again, I'm in the uh, chain mode. I'm going to click here. Now I have a choice. I could come and I could click here or I can click down here. This would be the better choice. This will allow my extension line to come off of the toe kick rather than the cabinet. And I'm going to click here just like here. Toe kick, cabinet. And click again. Now, I don't like the way the inch and, a three, inch and three quarters is inside, so I'm going to select the uh, 2D selection tool. Just hit X, or you can come up here and select it there. And then get the move cursor, or rather the resize cursor, actually, and move it over. Seems like it ought to be the move cursor, but if you select the move cursor, watch what happens. You move all of your dimensions and your cabinet and everything's all screwed up when you do that. So don't do that. Do the, um, um, the resize and move it over. Now, one of the neat things about this is, is that you can move this really anywhere you want. You could bring it down here. You could bring it over here. You could put it anywhere. But I'm just going to put it right out to the side. All right, let's go over and do the bottom of the um, other portion of the cabinet. And you've got it down now. You should have no trouble doing this. Click. We're going to click here. We're going to click here. Pull down. Now, an interesting thing, you could also go this way, couldn't you? Because Vectorworks, it's not sure which way, which thing you're actually dimensioning. You're dimensioning this or you're dimensioning this. So it's nice. It gives you a, the option click there and click and click again okay I'm gonna zoom back out now I'm gonna come over and I'm gonna do the side of the cabinet and I just noticed something my Two doors in my drawer front have moved, haven't they? Somewhere along the line I've I've moved them. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix that. Let me show you how I would approach fixing that. I'm going to click on the doors, the drawer front, hold the shift key down, select each door, select the knobs, select the knobs, and now I'm going to group it. Command G, and now I'm going to move it to this bottom left hand corner and I'm going to now move the whole thing. Command M, one half inch in the x axis and one half inch in the y axis. Now it's back to where it should be. I'm not sure when that happened, but hopefully yours wasn't like that. All right. So now let's do this let's do this side here this front view and let's dimension up vertically. So again, we're going to select the constrained dimension tool. We're going to do a uh, chain dimension. I'm going to click. I'm going to hit the Z key. Come up here. Hit the Z key again. I want to make sure that I'm not snapping to the end of that extension line because it will do that and pull out come on up click and click and click again again I'll go 
hit the X key, get my 2D selection tool, move this guy. I think I'll pull it down, keep it inside there. Okay, good. That looks great. All right, now let's look at our example and see what we want to do next. Well, it looks like we we can do this drawer front. Why don't we go ahead and do that? Um, again, same tool, same mode. I'm going to click and click. Come across, click, click, and click again. And selection tool move the half inch out of the way. Oops, I had the move tool selected. The command Z is your is your friend. It'll get you out of trouble every time. Okay, we'll move that over. Alright, that looks pretty good. Uh, except I don't like, I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and move this up. Get this up there. I probably should have done that in the first place and move this whole thing up so that I'm not obscuring that knob. Okay, and now you can see what I meant about the white fill behind here. If I want if I, you know, if that really bothered me, what I could do is select my attributes palette which is open here somewhere. I just can't see it. Let's see where is it? Here it is hiding down here open up the attributes palette and give this a oh I remember now I remember the problem with this now if I give it a the same fill color oops wrong one if I give it the same fill color then it does these half inch guys well what I could do with them is I could move them inside that would make it easier and the other thing that I can do, I want to show you this. Um, we have options on our extension lines. Um, if you look at that, you can see the extension line extending down to that arbitrary point that I started. Um, if I don't want to see that, what I'm going to do is come in here to the Object Info Palette. And that's Command-I if it's not open on your computer. Command-I and let's see where is it um, witness lines none they're gone okay now my other witness lines stayed there but they're gone so that looks pretty good alright let's go back to our model uh, let's do our doors Again, that's going to be a very similar operation. Here's what I'd do. I would start on the edge of the door. Pull it up just a little bit. Click. click and click again and then change that make that the color that I want oops that's the wrong color this one here okay and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, and move this over and by the way if you know if it feels like this dimensions a little too close to that one you can just kinda nudge it over a little bit too now let's do the other half inch measurements as separate measurements. Click, 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 half inch, and move over to the other side. Now notice that I didn't click right on the dimension line. I, dimi I clicked see this little blue dot that's where the actual end of the extension line or that's the point where we started remember we clicked and we went across and we clicked and then we moved it up just a little bit so that's where you want to start oops 
that's where you want to start with your half inch dimension. So click, 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 and then we can move it up and click. And then X key gets you out into the um, 2D selection tool mode, and there you are. Okay, so now we have it. Now you know the secret. That's how I did it. A lot of work. Um, probably most people, most of us wouldn't do that. Uh, go to all of that trouble. <clears throat> but um, there it is. Okay. Um, so we've got the doors done. We've, I think, let's look at our... Oh, I know, we have to do our knobs, the distances, so let's let's zoom in there and let's get them dimensioned. And let's take a look at how I did that. So this one, I'm just going to do a note, and this is great because this will be, be the first time you'll get to see how we do a note. And then this one says three inch typical and this one says inch and a three inch and three quarters typical so we can we're going to add this typical i'll show you how to do that all right let's go back and let's do the call out note first all right so let's do the call outs uh, for our knobs and we have a special tool right here that is called the callout tool. So I'm going to click on that and then come over to the top left of the modes bar, as I call it. Um, and we have a couple of different modes. First of all, you can draw starting at where you want your text and then move towards the object to which you're going to write the text about. Or you can start at the object and move to where you're going to write the text. I tend to like that way better. That's just, I think that's the way I would probably do it if I were drawing with a pencil. Um, so you can choose whatever one you like, but I, that you've got a choice. And then we, we the line, the leader line that goes to the note can either just be a simple single line or it can be a sort of a crooked line, uh, one on an angle and one horizontal. So let's see how this works. I've got both of those modes set. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click, click, and click again. So that defined my lines. And I'm going to write one inch diameter and OK. All right. Well, you can see it did exactly what we expected it to do. Um, and because we're on the cabinet dimension layer, we got the white fill. I'm going to go ahead and change that. And um, OK. I, I'm kind of unhappy with the size of that call out. Let's take a look at why it's so large. If we go up here to text size, it's at 14. Now, this is a, a good little side venture that we can take here. The reason our text in our dimensions wasn't size 14 was because when we set up our original document preferences and we created that custom cabinet standard dimension down here we said that the text style was going to be dimension 10 points so we locked in our dimensions at 10 points so it, it overrides any setting that the uh, was already in place on the on the computer but just remember the 10 point was the a setting that would override whatever our text was set up here. In this case, it's set at 14. The text will override it on our dimensions, but not on our callouts, not on, you know, if we were just going to write some regular text out here, that would all be 14. All right? So 
we have to go in and change this. Now I want to show you a couple of ways of changing things. Now if you're pretty sure that you want to write you know most everything from here on out as 10 point then what you can do is is click off well let me do it the other way let me back up let me do it this way first I'm gonna select this we know we want it to be 10 point we're gonna come in and we're gonna change it from 14 to 10 but now if I go back and I try to write more text it goes back to 14 and that's because you changed it or I changed it for that one instance of text if I want to change it from this point forward so that all text uh, will be 10 point unless I change it again I have to click off make sure nothing is selected come up here to text size notice it's back on 14 and change it to 10 now everything from this point forward will be um, will be a 10 point okay just wanted to make that distinction for you um, so there we go we've got our diameter now let's do our uh, dimensions for the uh, knob from the top of the door and from the side of the door so what I'm going to do is click on the I'm going to pull this over so you can see it the constrained um, line mode I'm going to I just want a single dimension I'm going to click here I'm going to click here and I'm going to pull back and I've got my three inches all right and then I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna come here and pull back and I've got one and three quarters I'm gonna pull this one over and I want to select both of these give them the fill of the door okay and then I want to add typical uh, as a trailer to these um, dimensions so I'm going to do them one at a time I'll select the three inch and if you notice on your object info palette if yours isn't open it's a uh, command I or control I for info I for info down at the bottom here we have leader and trailer if we want a typical to precede the number we would put it here if we want it to follow the number we put it here and that's what we want so TYP and actually a good thing to do here is put a space in there there we go and let's go here and put in space TYP and there you go all right so we've got all of our notes put in and now we'll move on to uh, some more dimensioning. Save, yes. Okay, so I think we have the cabinet, this cabinet done. Now I'm going to leave the rest for you. I want you to go ahead and dimension the rest of the cabinet on your own. Um, I'll do it here and we'll just sort of speed it up a little bit um, so that we can end this tape in a reasonable amount of time. Okay, well I hope you enjoy doing that. Um, I'll see you, see you soon. I'll put a little music on for you.
take one more look at uh, the original, make sure I, I got everything, but I think it's all there. And hope you have yours completed and had as much fun doing it as I did. So our next task will be to put in our titles, uh, both in the drawing area and within the title block. So see you soon.